And for my next stunt, we're working on the dash pad. I've never done this before, but I've watched several YouTube videos and they made it look so easy. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Troy's Garage. My name's Troy, this is my garage. Well, I've got my roll lock out with my die grinder. I've got a utility knife with a brand new blade in it so that I can kind of cut around taking out all the ridges. This part right here is the part I'm the most worried about. That's a solid inch and it's also real crusty down in there. So I'm gonna have to cut back even farther. So I've gotta figure out something that's gonna fill that and be rigid enough to, you know, give it some beef and be able to lay smooth across the top of it. I also gotta figure out something for filling in this gap. Metal mesh is what's coming to mind, I'm not sure. Riggs basically said, if this doesn't work, then we'll just go with a straight up metal dash, but I'm gonna give this a try, see if I can salvage this. Not sure how hard this is going to be to cut either. Oh, it just breaks. It's brittle. Wow. Okay, so this is going to be a big old challenge. But anything that pokes up, I've got to take off. Don't cut yourself, idiot. <laughs> it just crumbles. It's just crumbling. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, that actually works pretty good. That's what we're doing. Yeah, so that's basically the process that I'm going through. I'm going to chase all the cracks with the edge of it until there's no more crack, no more raised. Anything that pokes up has got to come off so that it will lay flat and look right. Uh, I kind of started over here on this one as well, but I'm just going to continue that process through this whole thing. I mean, I've got cracks that come all the way down through here, lots of cracks down on this end as well. I was practicing over here just so that I could get an idea for what it takes to get this done. Uh, I'm trying to get out any of the foam that's uh, non-structural anymore, that there's no give to it anymore. But anyway, I'm just going to keep cranking on this and I'll give you updates as I go along. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay I move on each and every day The past is where it stays Way back a year ago I've changed for the better this time I thought I would never be fine I strive just to say I'm alright and for the first time in a long time, I'm all right. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay, I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year ago. I forgot how messy this is. I got the one spot filled there I got that crack filled and I got two more over here on this side with the first coat this one I left quite a bit out because that's a deep one that's gonna take a while for that one to cure and of course I'm making a big old mess and I'm almost out of hardener so I'm gonna dump out what hardener I do have and then match it 
with the Bondo, the filler, body filler Bondo crap, and mix up another batch and then just go as far as I can again here. I'm avoiding the speaker hole because I have some metal on order for that, and we'll tackle that when it gets here. So it's a brand new morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, this is all dried up real nice, no cracking. Looking good. What in the Frankenstein we got going on here? Franken dash pad. Uh, basically, I just took various sizes of grabber screws. I wanted to give that a little bit more rigidity. 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 That's the word. Uh, so when that Bondo dries across there, it'll basically just well it's now has rebar in it so that's awesome uh, I'm gonna continue this morning and just kind of fill all these little spots that are around the edges it started on the Grand Canyon down the middle uh, flip it and do the stuff that's up underneath under there the uh, metal piece that I bought for this won't be here till Wednesday so that's a few days from now so in the meantime I'm just gonna keep mixing up some goo spreading some goo. I'm going to start sanding. I can basically get everything done except for this part and be really close to knowing if this is going to work or not. just there you saw me using a sheetrock rasp you can do that on the bondo as it's starting to set up notice kind of the color difference between here and here this is the new stuff and the older stuff is a lot harder more pinkish but I just was using that to get some of that real bulk down that saves hours and hours of sanding so you'll want to get one of these and keep it handy I'll leave a link down below to one that I use I added some blue tape back behind here sorry I didn't show uh, doing this side but when I mixed that up I think I added too much hardener it started like right now getting busy getting busy was getting set up so I just kind of slammed it on real fast that's why it looks so bad and that was the worst part so I was doing what I could to clean that up to save myself too much sanding but I'm ready to mix up the next batch and start basically on this section in here uh, so I'll show that the entire process um, I'm gonna basically just kind of work this area right here uh, this is gonna eat up a lot of material so I'm gonna mix up a decent little amount and get after it and then the next batch uh, will come down here and then I'm gonna let the whole thing set up and do my first pass at sanding and just make sure that all these cracks are actually stain filled oh, I got one more section right there to do still too but this is gonna be a process it's you know you're gonna apply it let it cure sand it 
apply it, let it cure, sand it. I did go last night and pick up some glazing putty for on top. Got some more Bondo because it's going to take more than I have. Uh, but the glazing putty is kind of a lighter mix that goes over the top. And you just kind of almost do a skim coat over the top of it. And then you can do your fine sanding. And that stuff sands a little bit easier. It's not quite as hard, so you can't go super thick. You're not supposed to go super thick with Bondo either, just so you know. But that's a good uh, two, two and a half inches deep all the way to the bottom of that. So let's fill the Grand Canyon with Bondo just like you're not supposed to do. Cool. Wow, that is a thirsty Grand Canyon. That is nowhere near enough. Wow, thought I was mixing up a whole bunch. Let's do some more. Well, there you go. That's the process. And you just do it over and over and over and over. That blue tape is not holding and I just got it all over my hand. That's perfect. Good thing I wear silicone wedding band. Because that would have been disastrous on a gold one. Sheesh. Let's go. This is a messy process, for sure. Hey, check that out. We'll just do that. Perfect. Well, I kind of have to say, this is turning out better than I thought it was going to. I was hoping it'd turn out good. Yep, it's been about an hour since I put that one in there, and it's cold to the touch. Sheesh, that stuff kicks up some nasty dust and stuff. Good thing I'm wearing my respirator when I do this. Don't want to be breathing that crap in, get black lung syndrome. Still need to fill in down here, but I was running low on motivation, honestly. But now that I know that this is turning out okay, still have low spots in here I gotta fill in. But some of these actually feel really good. They don't look amazing, but they will with some, some paint on here. I'm not sure exactly what finish I'm gonna go with on this, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So far, so good. Let's keep cranking.
I've been at it for most of the day. This is probably coat number, I would guess five is where I'm at. It takes a special person to do this on a daily basis, like for a living. Oh my gosh, I do not have the patience for that. Uh, I And I've been using an orbital sander with 60 grit sandpaper. Yeah, that's how impatient I am. Now that I'm down to what I think is real close to a finished product, at least for my base, uh, I'm busting out the glazing putty. I do still have to sand this last coat. I'm going to lightly do it with the 60 grit. And then I got a little sanding block. It's just a foam sanding block. Probably 180 grit. Yeah, this is 180. And it feels similar to that. So yeah, probably 180. Uh, but I'm going to do some fine tuning with that. Uh, kind of up and around the edges. I don't want you to look too close at this. See? Looks amazing, doesn't it? <laughs> it's perfect. Anyway, uh... This is one of those deals where better than used, not quite new. This is to save Rig a bunch of money and also give him a dash pad back in the truck so that he's not just running a metal dash with his little boy sitting next to him. It can be a safety thing. So if nothing else, this will at least be on the dash and be all one color and hopefully not huge cracks in it. Hopefully it lasts through summers and whatnot. I've kind of manhandled this thing, flipping it up and back and whatnot, and it's holding together. There was a, I mean, this was the Grand Canyon gap that I called right here. Um, right there you can see a crack. That one's not holding together with the Bondo very well. This one is, and the Grand Canyon is. This one over here is holding together pretty good. I do still need to go on this front surface with one last coat before I go to the glazing putty. But I'm getting close. I was hoping to finish this today, primed, painted, the whole thing, but I don't think that's happening. I'm way too lazy for that. But I'm gonna get this sanded, get a coat on this underside, hopefully get that sanded. Uh, and then I'm gonna run my hand across it and see how it feels. Maybe, maybe with this last little bit, and the sanding. I won't even need to do this. I know Rig's gonna be happy with it no matter what. This is good practice for me though, before I do it on something that really matters. Not that Rig's truck doesn't matter, but he's already said, dude, give it a good effort, and if you can't fix it, I'll run it without it. So, no harm, no foul. But that's what I'm up against, right? It's This is just a, an attempt. If nothing else, I'm practicing with Bondo. Uh, and my sanding skills. <laughs> I know. I know. But it is what it is, so let's just keep cranking at it. That's a messy job. I don't have the dust collection and all the fancy things that a lot of these body shops have and stuff. I attacked that entire thing with 60 grit sandpaper on a DeWalt random orbital sander because, well, that's the best thing that I've got. Uh, it looks okay. It's a 51 year old truck. Uh, this little speaker cover thing turned out pretty awesome. I'm tired of this. I'm gonna clean this off with the air gun and spray some primer. I'm, I, I am not a body guy. <laughs> I'm not even gonna pretend that I am. It turned out okay. It's, it's not amazing. It's definitely not perfect. But it's better than running just a straight up metal grill. Metal grill? Metal dash. Let's get some primer on it. Nice. Setting up my paint booth down here because all the dust is at that side of the garage. That makes sense. Every once in a while, it's a good idea to replace 
your uh, respirator canisters. I haven't replaced these in a while and I could tell they needed it because it was getting a little bit hard to breathe through. Picked up some new ones. Because safety eventually or something like that. Let's get to priming. Hey, I can breathe. That's amazing. Hopefully these cans work. Oh yeah. Yep, it's not perfect. Let me get a light. Still trying to breathe through this thing. Woo! Used a red oxide primer just because I knew I had enough of that. And just sprayed it thick. Super thick. Yep, like I said, it's not perfect, but you know what? It's going to do. It'll be just fine. Yep, it'll be fine. Open the garage and let it air out a little bit in here. I laid that paint on thick, except it's primer, but still thick. Let's walk outside here for a second. Full moon tonight. A little bit of a fog going on in there definitely some fumes. I'm gonna leave the door open for a little bit and let that air out. All right, hey guys, it is several days later. Got really tired of sanding, I'm not gonna lie. I am not a body guy. I don't even want to be a body guy. That is miserable, it's stupid, I hate it. Anyway, here's, here's where we're at. Uh, I painted several coats, the flat black on this, after sanding it with as much patience as I could muster. It is nowhere near perfect. I decided I'm gonna, well, so here's the deal. Here, here's the deal. Over on Instagram, I posted a picture of this with my progress update. I posted a reel or two about it, that sort of thing, right? So first of all, go over there and follow me on Instagram. Uh, that'd be awesome, appreciate that. But I had a, a, a viewer comment and say that he did the exact same repair and it was awesome, it was amazing till summer hit. And then it cracked and it got ugly. Uh, so now I'm freaking out. All this work, all this sanding, all this bondo, all this stupid crap that I did on this thing, it's about to become worthless when the sun shines, really? So I was like, huh, well what could I do to toughen this thing up? I know. I'm gonna use my brand new product, Troy's Truck Bed Liner. You know what all this fine print right here says? Don't do what Troy does. That's what it says. Uh, it says, do it when it's warm. It's cold. Uh, shake the crap out of the can. I'll run out of patience before I hit a full minute on that. But I'm going to do my best to follow the instructions on the back of the can. It says to shake it like crazy. Shake it like crazy some more. And then shake it some more. Then spray. And about every minute or so of spraying, you need to stop and shake it some more. So I'm going to get my arm workout in today and shake the crap out of this. We're going to put three, four, five, I don't even know how many coats we're going to put on this. But uh, roll the time lapse. Let's get shaken and bacon. I'll shake, you guys bake. Here goes nothing. Yeah. 
First coat laid down smooth. <laughs> Time for a whole bunch more coats. Uh, I'm just going to use the entire can, see how many coats that gives me. But I'll leave a link down below to the actual product that I used. A little marketing gimmick to, to have you use those links down there. Anyway, Troy's truck bed liner going down. So a single can threw down uh, a little better than three coats. I kind of finished the can just kind of spritzing across uh, up and down to try to eliminate any tiger striping that might be taking place. I laid it on pretty thick across right here and here because there were a lot of cracks in there from before. Uh, right in here is where the Grand Canyon was. So i got to keep an eye on that spot as well. But I think overall this is turning out well, better than I imagined. Uh, it does smooth out as it dries, so it's not as textured as like a truck bed liner would be. Uh, sprayed in in the typical fashion anyway. Uh, and most things, they kind of just splatter it on. This stuff goes on a lot like uh, Plastidip, if you've ever used that product. It goes on very similar to that. Uh, I'm going to let this cure up overnight. It's just now starting to get dark outside. And uh, let this cure up overnight. I'm going to leave this heater going for a minute. I've got the door open to get the fumes out. Uh, I don't smell it in here anymore, but anyway, I think this is going to turn out pretty darn good. Troy's truck bed liner. It's good stuff. Use that link down below. Pick yourself up some for a project like this. You'll want to remember to peel your tape before it dries too much because the stuff dries thick and hard and you won't be able to get it off. I should have layered this a little bit better so that I could get it off. A little more efficiently when the time came. Ooh, I waited a little bit long on this one. I put tape on the back side in case I got overspray. I just didn't want anything to clog up too bad. There we go. It's done. Well, it's future me coming at you again. I just finished editing this video and I went looking for the footage where I installed the dash pad in the truck and I can't find that footage anywhere. I don't know if I'm missing a memory card or if I copied those files into the wrong location. I'm usually pretty good at this stuff, keeping things organized and stuff, but that footage just doesn't exist. So if it turns up at some point, I'll put it in the final video or something uh, but for now it is what it is hope you forgive me for that the the dash pad turned out pretty good 
Uh, like I said throughout the video, it's definitely not perfect. Lots of room for improvement on my Bondo skills and sanding, patience, and whatnot. But for what it used to look like compared to what it looks like today, it's night and day different. So, and that's kind of what we were going for anyway. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. If you've made it this far in the video, you are definitely a true fan and you deserve a trophy of some sort. I have nothing to give you, but I really do appreciate it. I appreciate the, the kind comments, the thumbs ups, all those things. They help the channel more than you know. Uh, comments, especially interacting. Uh, I do read my comments. I try to respond to as many of them as I can. I appreciate all of that. And I'm actually standing in front of my next project. So uh, it's light blue, two-tone, baby blue, sky blue. I'm not sure what the color names are, but that gives you a little hint of what it is. Uh, lots of videos coming on that. Uh, this one I bought myself, so it's mine. I appreciate you guys watching, commenting, check those links down below, Amazon affiliate links, doesn't cost you anything extra. You can actually click on any of those links, do any of your regular shopping on Amazon, and I get credit for those sales. I get just a small percentage back. But like I said, it doesn't cost you guys anything. So I would appreciate if you're going to Amazon anyway, come to my video, go down there on any of my videos, click on any of those Amazon links, do your shopping. That just helps me out, and I do appreciate that immensely. Helps more than you think it does. And all that money goes right back into creating content for you guys. So appreciate it, and we'll see you guys in the next video.